Hey Axis and Allies players, uh, this is the Good Captain. Welcome to my first post series video. I know it's been a while. I've been playing as much Axis and Allies Classic as I can. I've met and played against a lot of great players via AxisandAllies.org using the AAA game system, which is my backdrop for this video. And I've learned some things. So before I get into the topic of this video, I'll just say that I will continue to make videos on Axis and Allies Classic. I've got at least two others that I'd I intend to do, but all proceeding videos will be at my own whim. The first 10, I really knew what I wanted to say and how, basically how I wanted to say it, and it was just a matter of uh, executing them. And now that those are out of the way, this is more of going to be a, a progression sort of series of videos now. Uh, things that I've learned, where I changed my mind, strategies, etc., etc. So, the first one... It's obviously Russia restricted, why you need it. Uh, I am going to be demonstrating why Russia restricted, which is a optional rule, quote unquote optional rule in the out of box rules, should be considered part of the rules. It really just needs to be. And in one of my previous videos, I said it's more historically accurate anyway. And now I'm going to show you why the game itself needs it. I'm not going to save the cherry for the end, I'll tell you right now, that if the Russians can attack on their first turn, they most definitely should attack, at the very least, the Ukraine SSR. Uh, there's an argument for attacking Manchuria, and I'll briefly touch on that, even though I kind of already touched on it in my Russian strategic video, oh, but I'll touch on that again because I, I think I can help sharpen it up by using the AAA battle calculator. The rest of this video is going to be discussing this attack into the Ukraine SSR, and then Germany's reaction to it, which is difficult to articulate, and that's part of the problem and part of the reason why the Russia restricted should just use in any any time you play this game, even when you're new. If you're new, you should use this rule if, for nothing else, because if you're watching this video and you've never played a classic before, knowing this will set you uh, give you a huge leg up as the allies if you do what I'm about to show you. So, without further ado, we're going to go into it. So, Russia's tech roll, you skip this part. Don't do tech dice on the first turn. And in my original video, I said 8 infantry is a solid build. And it arguably still is, but if you can attack, uh, I would do 6 infantry in a tank and save a dollar. Okay, so you're, you've got 6 infantry in a tank as your builds. We're going to skip past this now. Okay, Russian combat move. Now in the combat move, what you want to do, and we'll do in more in-depth discussion as we go, but you'll want to commit every ground unit that you possibly can into Ukraine SSR, including the five Russian infantry from the Caucasus, the three Russian infantry and armor from Karelia, and the two Russian armor from Russia. Then the Russian player only needs to decide whether he wants to use zero, one, or two aircraft in the Ukraine SSR battle. My personal preference is one, but before we get into too much of that, let's pull up the battle calculator discuss it. First let's just discuss this odds calculator. So you have the attacker here, which is obviously not the Germans, but the Russians, and the defender is the Germans. And then you can punch in how many units there are. Eight attacking infantry and three attacking tanks versus three defending infantry, two defending tanks, and one defending fighter. So this is it, right? And now what this battle calculator does, how it works, is very simple. It's, it's, it will run this battle a set amount of times, so the run count is set to 200. So when I hit this button here, calculate odds, it will quite literally play out 200 battles instantaneously and produce the results of those battles in terms of an average up here. The only thing you need to do before you roll is make sure these four boxes are calibrated appropriately. Notice it is a land battle, so that's checked. If it was naval, we would uncheck that. Um, it's not amphibious, so we leave it unchecked. This isn't, we're not trying to take somebody's capital, so we don't have to check the one attacking land unit must live. That's if you want to lose planes over that last uh, armor unit to take the capital or whatever. And then retreat when only air left. Well, right now we don't have any air, and we're not too worried about losing, so we're going to leave that unchecked as well. All right. Sorry about that little corruption there. But So now we're ready to hit calculate odds. And you'll see the attacker wins 97% of the time in this. It, we, it ran 200 times, and 97% of the time, the uh, attacker won. And the defender won 2% of the time. And when the attacker won, the average attacker units left was 6 and sometimes even 7. 
which means you'll be able to keep your tanks as the Russians most of the time, and uh, three or four of your infantry. So that's pretty good. And if you think, well, that was just lucky, right? Like, you know, maybe you were lucky in that 200 battles and the Russians came out on top most of the time. Well, you can run it again. This time, the attacker won 98% of the time and still had six or seven units at the end of the battle as an average. Run it again, 98, six or seven. Okay, you get the point. So what I like to do, and the reason I like to bring a fighter, is watch what, it, watch what happens to the average attacker units left when you throw in a fighter. Notice it jumped up to 8, and now you have 100% attacker wins. In other words, out of 200 battles, when you had this fighter thrown in, the Russians won 100, never, they never lost. They never lost. So it's, it's safe to say that you are really, you can run it again. It, same thing happened. You could run it again. Same thing happened. You have eight and sometimes even nine units left over, and that's what I like. I, I want eight or nine. You could potentially bring in a second fighter, and I'll just show you that. So you'll have nine, sometimes ten. But this is a diminishing returns to me. We can get this done with one, and besides that, fighters needed elsewhere. So I'm happy with that. We're going to commit one fighter. What do we do with the other one? Of course, we attack the Baltic fleet. I like to bring in the sub as well. You could bring in the transport, or you could bring it in to uh, protect the British fleet. Uh, just for purposes of this video, I'll move it here, but I um, almost certainly would never do that. I just want to make sure that the German fleet gets sunk. Um, and if you just want to see how this works, uh, you could. I, 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 whenever I play AAA, I do this for pretty much any battle now. Um, so this would not be a land battle. If you, I'm just going to do the calculations on uh, this attack against the German Baltic fleet. So we have a sub, we also have a transport as a soak, and we have a fighter, and they've got a sub and a transport. So the attacker wins 97% of the time. And the average units left is two and sometimes three. So we expect to lose the transport or the sub and uh, sink both these boats, German boats, okay? So we're done with the combat move. So let's just knock out the ba Baltic Sea battle really quick. Oof, sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna hope to do some damage. Yes, we got, we got one. Okay. So there we go. Uh, the Russians sink both German boats they have, for the loss of their submarine. And now we're going to go ahead and go to the battle in the Ukraine. Okay, so um, these, these eight infantry, you're, you're going to expect one and maybe two kills. And then from the tank and fighter combo, you're expecting two. So this is a low roll. This isn't great, but um, obviously the Germans are going to select... Actually, 99% of the German players would you know take two hits as the um, infantry, on their infantry, but in this situation, what I would do is I would just drop the tanks, and that's to bait the Russians into potentially retreating. In other words, if the Germans roll hot on this roll, they're more apt to retreat, and the Germans need every single piece they can get. So if we roll hot, and the Russians realize, think, well, hey, I got their tanks, what am I still attacking for, just their infantry, or to try to grab that fighter? This is the way I used to run it when the Russian player did it. Okay, so in, the Germans were low rolled too. They should have had at least one and probably maybe two hits out of their two defenders. And instead, they got none. But they popped a, they popped a one of them. So of course, we're going to remain and finish them off. So again, a low roll on the Russians from the Russian side. A fighter missed, but we rolled a little bit above here, and we're just going to finish them off. Fighter missed again. Wow. Okay. But you can see... We, okay, so we survived with seven Russian uh, ground units. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is not far off from what was expected. And so we're just going to finish this turn out. We're going to do a non-combat. Non-combat. And consolidate all of our units that can into Karelia. And then this is, you, if you want to check out what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, um, 
you can check out my Russian strategic video. Um, but that's how I like to set up my wall. Oops, excuse me. This is how I like, like to set up my um, eastern defense there. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and place all the units in the obvious place. And um, now we're going to move into the German turn, just to look at... Oh, I'm sorry. There's one last thing, that, one very important last thing that you want to do, and that is what you're going to want to do is move this anti-aircraft gun in Karelia down into the Ukraine, and then move the Russian anti-aircraft gun in Russia, um, and move it into Karelia. So, and I'm just using uh, the edit mode uh, to add in what I screwed up in my non-combat move. So when you're done, you should look like this. You should have the AA gun from Russia moved to Karelia, the one from Karelia moved to the Ukraine. And why are you doing this? To consolidate your defense and to let the Germans know that you intend to stay. You're not just exposing your tanks now for the Germans to take, uh, to wipe you out with. If they want to come back and get you um, and use air units, they're going to have to run the risk of losing some planes. This disincentivizes the Germans immensely, especially on the first turn, since their planes are so badly needed to attack British shipping and uh, units in Africa. So, the Russians have, will have 28 units for the next turn, and they're in, they're in just beautiful looking shape. And I'll, I'll discuss the German counterattack options. So if you're the Germans, the smart thing to do is always buy all infantry. And this is, I'll make another video about Axis strategy, but uh, I'm just going to basically do what I normally do. And this is a tough, crummy situation for the Germans. Let's run this attack, right? If you could attack with everything you had in terms of ground units and not risk any air units, the most you could do is throw in four tanks and three infantry. So let's go to our battle calculator. The attacker will win 80% of the time. The amount of units you'll have left is three tanks as the Germans, and sometimes you'll get to keep that fourth tank. So if you run it again, you see it's, uh, you know, mid to low 80s. Yeah, so 80 to 85%. You, you might be thinking, that's great, but keep an eye on the average attacker units left. Look, three, maybe four if you're lucky. Okay, Probably just three tanks. So you'll be able to take this thing back. But you're probably only going to have three tanks in there left. What can the Russians then do? Just squash those tanks. So this is not good for the Germans. Uh, what else could you do? Or you could throw in air units, but then you'd risk being shot down by the Russian AA gun. And there's nothing better for the Allies than to pop uh, German air units in the first round, first turn of combat. These air units are in my opinion, very vital to the German uh, longevity. This is a really tough situation for the Germans, okay? So um, it, it's not that they can't win. In fact, I've, I've basically had this done to me and still had Japan uh, take down the Russian capital before I finally conceded because Germany eventually did collapse. Um, and that's on the that was played a game against Disneyland and that's on the forum. Uh, but at any rate, Germany cannot lose these four territories. And on their first turn, uh, they're going to be struggling to just build up the eastern and the Atlantic and, and uh, uh, eastern walls, basically, to protect these four core territories. They're going to probably not, they're likely not have Finland, Norway at the end of this uh, complete world turn, and that Africa will be in jeopardy by then, too. Um, so this just over options the German player. There is so much work to be done against the British ships and against the Russians now because of this whole situation on the Eastern Front that they're just, they start out, the, they haven't even got to their first turn and they're in a, in a totally overwhelmed situation. This is why I say it's not historically accurate. The Germans, did, uh, excuse me, the Russians did not have all their stuff together to begin the March on Berlin in the spring of 1942, which is basically what's happening here. So use Russia restricted. I do concede that it is probably imbalanced if you let the Russians do this attack. 
Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's uh, I just wanted to cover that and show you guys this uh, once and for all. Uh, this is why you need to use Russia Restricted, and I say this even if you're a new player because if you've even watched if you've watched this video and you haven't played it yet, or you're in like uh, somebody who hasn't played Classic but you've played other versions of Axis and Allies, you are gonna again start out with such a a huge advantage uh, just knowing this. Um. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you for watching this. All the best from the good captain, and bye-bye. Uh, I forgot, or I noticed one thing, and then I forgot to do another. So um, in that battle calculation I ran, there wasn't four German infantry. There was only three, and so... When you run the odds, just again using only the ground units that can reach uh, Ukraine on the counterattack, um, it's, it's significantly worse when the Germans don't have four infantry. <laughs> so you, you'll notice that the uh, attacker wins 68% of the time, 65% of the time, 72% of the time, 65% of the time, 68. Okay, so mid 60s to low 70s. Um, and the average attacking units left would be two and sometimes three. So this is not a, this, uh, you can't just counterattack with ground units, this Russian incursion, um, most of the time. If you're lucky, there's only seven Russian units here, or even six if you're super lucky, which would, uh, you know, change things. The, the point is, you will be exposing German, irreplaceable German units and spreading yourself out, and you're, if you're doing that, you're playing the allied game, and best of luck to you. And the other thing that I wanted to show was, uh, that I forgot to, was this attack in the east. Now, um, when you launch this attack, the Russians attack the Japanese, and they can hit Manchuria with five infantry and a tank, and the Japanese have three infantry and a fighter. And you'll see that the attacker wins 64% of the time. And this this should undoubtedly, if you do this, this should be a strafe. You should do one or two rounds of combat or whatever and then pull out. Do not take Manchuria because the Japanese fleet can counterattack and just wipe out whatever was left. And you've got nothing left that stands between you and Moscow. You'll have to build something new and send it east, which is what you don't want to do. You want to beat the snot out of Germany. and. One thing more I wanted to say was that when you get this, when, when, you're, when you're looking at a battle that has this kind of close to 50 sort of result, like I, I get that it's in favor of the Russians, but this, this is not anything like a guarantee. You, if, you, if your aim is to truly win the battle, you want at least something like 80 something percent or better. Otherwise, you run the risk of just being. Uh, you, you, you're you're at the uh, at the whim of the dice, so if that's your thing, go for it. But it's not mine, so I I really don't like to do stuff like this, especially on the first turn. So uh, that's why I just wanted to sharpen up that little note. Um, so just to recap, of, I did a video, uh, the Russian strategic video, I should say, had me saying something like, "I didn't care if you used Russia restricted or not." But this has been demonstrated to me, as I've demonstrated it to you now, as to, to be very effective at putting Germany on the ropes and forcing them to take greater risks just to stay in the game. And if that wasn't enough, it's it, this is highly ahistorical, being that the Russians weren't on their way to Berlin like they are right now on the spring of 42. So, yeah, I just wanted to tighten that up. So uh, thanks for watching this. All the best and bye-bye.